we're diving into something pretty fascinating today. Um, cis lunar space. You send over some stuff from Polarify Consulting about this region, you know, between Earth and the moon. And it seems like things are about to get very interesting up there. Yeah, it's easy to think it's just a far off dream space exploration and all. But uh, honestly, cis lunar space is becoming the next big thing. So we're not just talking about like astronauts just bouncing around on the moon anymore. No, not at all. Imagine like a, a super highway mm -hmm. just bustling with activity, you know, with infrastructure, lunar bases, even space mining. Building a new frontier. Uh, but why? Why now? What's driving this sudden need for all this cosmic real estate? Well, it boils down to limitations here on Earth, you know. We're hitting walls. Yeah. In terms of, like, technological advancement, we need more resources, more space. So it's like we need a bigger workshop for our, like, increasingly ambitious project. Yeah, exactly. Take communication on the far side of the moon, for example. Earth signals, they can't reach there directly, oh. which means we need a relay system. Yeah. You know, satellites strategically placed in cislunar space. This infrastructure is, well, it's crucial for everything. Exploration, resource management, you name it. So it's like setting up cell towers, but on a cosmic scale. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. So where does NASA's Lunar Gateway fit into all of this? So the Lunar Gateway, it's, well, it's more than just a space station. It's a staging ground. Okay. A sort of cosmic layover for missions heading deeper into space. A cosmic pit stop, I like it. Exactly. Offers a safe harbor for astronauts to dock, refuel, conduct research. Makes sense, logistically speaking. But cislunar space, it's a pretty harsh environment, right? Are we talking about radiation shielding, dodging um, micrometeoroids? You're right. Space is, well, it's unforgiving. However, engineers, scientists, they're developing incredible technologies to, you know, to combat these challenges. Mm. Advanced materials for radiation shielding, early warning systems okay. for micrometeoroids, just innovations. So it's like developing high performance gear for extreme environments, but on Earth, only like on a much grander scale. Yes, exactly. OK, speaking of grand scales, let's talk about lunar mining. It sounds like something straight out of science fiction. It might sound futuristic, but it's closer than you think. The moon holds vast reserves of resources, particularly water ice, yeah. which is critical, not just for life support, but as a potential source of rocket fuel. So instead of hauling fuel all the way from Earth, we could like create a sort of cosmic gas station on the moon. Precisely. Imagine lunar outpost just buzzing with not just astronauts and scientists, but miners extracting resources to sustain a permanent human presence. Giving me like gold rush vibes, but instead of panning for gold, we're harvesting resources that could fuel humanity's expansion into the cosmos. A modern day gold rush on a celestial scale. Yeah. With the potential to reshape global economies and just, you know, redefine our relationship with space. So who are the major players in this new space race? Is it just nations or are private companies getting in on the action too? Well, it's a multipolar race this time around, which makes it, I don't know, I think it's even more fascinating. You have the U.S. leading the charge with the Artemis program, aiming for a sustainable lunar presence. Right. Then there's China and Russia collaborating on the International Lunar Research Station, focused on building a more permanent base directly on the lunar surface. So many different players. It's interesting to see these like these collaborations, these competitions all playing out yes. on this global scale. It feels like the stakes are higher than ever before. Absolutely. Since lunar space, it isn't just about national pride anymore. Yeah. It's about securing advantages. Strategic advantages. Yes, yeah, strategic advantages, access to resources. Resources that could shape the future. That could shape the future of humanity. Yeah. Exactly. It's a balancing act, really. Between collaboration and competition. It is. And this is where private companies, you know, they, they enter the picture, mm -hmm. injecting even more uh, dynamism into the equation. So it's not just about governments anymore. Not at all. Private companies like SpaceX, they're already, you know, revolutionizing space travel. And now they're setting their sights on the cislunar economy. Wow. We're talking private companies launching rockets, building space stations, even planning lunar mining expeditions. It's like, I don't know, it's like something out of science fiction, but it's happening. It is. It's happening right now. Right now. And these companies, they're not just following the lead of government agencies. They're often at the forefront, developing innovative technologies, just pushing the boundaries of what's possible. So we have this this exciting kind of convergence, government ambitions, private sector ingenuity, all focused on this new frontier of cislunar space. Yeah. It really does feel like we're on the cusp of something, I don't know, transformative. Absolutely. And with private companies, well, 
like we said, things are about to get even more interesting. Speaking of private companies, let's, you know, delve a little deeper into who's who in this new cislunar gold rush. We've mentioned SpaceX, but there's a whole, like, constellation of other players making waves out there. One company that stands out, well, there's Astrobotic. They're developing lunar landers. Okay. Designed to transport, you know, cargo, scientific instruments, even commercial payloads to the moon's surface. So they're like the FedEx of space, exactly. delivering everything from like essential supplies to cutting edge scientific equipment. Precisely. <laughs> they are, you know, laying the groundwork yeah. for a sustained human presence on the moon. And then there's Intuitive Machines, another key player in this uh, this lunar lander arena. Their focus is on providing, you know, cost-effective, reliable access yeah. to the lunar surface. Which makes sense, yeah. For any of this to work long-term, we need something a little bit more sustainable than a one-time, like, exorbitantly priced rocket trip. Exactly. And it's not just about what's happening on the you know lunar surface. Right. Axiom Space, for example, they're taking a different approach. They're developing the world's first commercial space station with plans to you know expand their operations into cislunar space. So instead of establishing a base on the moon itself, they're creating a sort of orbiting hub. Yeah, like an orbiting hub. Is that for like research or manufacturing, even space tourism? What are we talking here? All of the above. Yeah. Imagine a modular space station, you know, adaptable research labs, conducting groundbreaking experiments in microgravity, manufacturing facilities, producing high value products, things that are just impossible to create here on Earth. Right. And even, yeah, even luxury hotels offering these breathtaking views of Earth and the moon. That's an interesting mix of like practicality and luxury. Sign me up for a room with a view. But on a more serious note, this all feels very much like, you know, the early days of the internet, lots of companies, different ideas, all contributing to something, I don't know, something much bigger than themselves. A very astute observation. Yeah. And just as the internet revolutionized communication information access, yeah. like, the cislinear economy has the potential to, well, to revolutionize how we live, how we work, even how we define ourselves as a species, I think. It's exciting, but also a bit overwhelming to think about. It's like a fundamental shift in our relationship with space. It's not just about exploration anymore. It's not just about, you got it. It's about economic development, governance, maybe even like new societal structures, yeah. a whole new world out there. It is. It's a lot to process. Mm. But that's, I think that's what makes this such a... I know it's such a pivotal conversation to have. Right. The decisions made today about cislunar space, these things will, they'll reverberate for centuries. So we've covered lunar landers, orbiting outposts. Right. What other developments are like brewing in this private space enterprise boom? Communication. Communication is key. A thriving cislunar economy relies heavily on staying connected. Of course, yeah. That's where companies like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman come in. Big names. They're developing communication and navigation networks for cislunar space. So it's like a cosmic internet. A cosmic internet. Exactly. To keep everything, you know, connected and running smoothly. You think of it like building a city, uh -huh. right? You need the buildings, roads, all the infrastructure. Right. But you also need a reliable power grid, communication networks, resource management. Waste management, yeah. Exactly. That's a great analogy. It really highlights, I think, the complexity of building a sustainable presence in space. It is complex. But let's be realistic for a second. Space exploration and development, it's notoriously expensive. It is. How do we ensure that all of this is financially viable in the long term? You've hit on a critical point. We need to, we really need to shift away from this mindset of short-term missions. Okay. Towards, you know, long-term sustainability to more long-term thinking yeah long term that means investing in technologies infrastructure things that can be reused repurposed so instead of treating it like a one-time expedition we need to approach it more like building a permanent settlement exactly thinking about long-term resource management infrastructure development even economic viability exactly and that's what's i think that's what's so exciting about the cislunar economy it's not just about you know, extracting resources, bringing them back to Earth. It's about establishing a self-sustaining presence in space. We're talking about manufacturing products in space, yeah. conducting research, even developing new forms of energy, propulsion, things that could, you know, completely revolutionize space travel. It's like transitioning from, I don't know, horse-drawn carriages to automobiles. Right. Or from propeller planes to jet engines. Exactly. A whole new era 
whole new that's space exploration and development limited only by i guess our imagination and maybe our willingness to invest in the long-term vision and that's why you know engaging in these conversations raising public awareness inspiring the next generation this is so crucial we need everyone to you know, to dream big yeah push the boundaries of what's possible absolutely we need everyone from like seasoned astronauts to like you said students just starting their journeys yes to contribute to this vision it's a call to action for all of humanity really you need to claim our place claim our place exactly among the stars now bring it back to our you know core question why does all of this matter why should we care about a cis lunar space lunar mining space manufacturing the private space industry why it's about so much more than just the rockets and the robots at this point isn't it it is it's about like you said the future of humanity you hit the nail on the head it's about pushing the boundaries of human ingenuity, new scientific discoveries, economic opportunities, you know, things that could benefit generations to come. But it's also about something, I don't know, I think even more profound. What's that? Our place in the cosmos. Mm. It really is. As we venture further from Earth, we gain this new perspective oh, okay. on our own planet. You know, the fragility of life, the importance of working together to I don't know, to address the challenges facing humanity. It's not just a destination. It's not just a destination. No, it's yeah. a mirror. A mirror reflecting. Reflecting our own potential, our capacity for innovation, our responsibility to create a better future for everyone. It really makes you think about, like you said, the bigger picture. It does. It really does. Yeah. And as we kind of delve deeper into this whole cislunar frontier, it's important to remember, I think, it's not without its challenges. Right. Yeah. We're talking about, well, you know, the realities of space, right? The need for reliable and affordable transportation, not to mention the whole, the complexities of international collaboration. Exactly. And let's not forget, well, I guess you could say the elephant in the room. Okay. The cost. Space exploration and development. It requires, you know, yeah. significant financial investment. Lots of money. How do we ensure that all of this is actually, you know, sustainable? In the long run. Yeah, that's a question I'm sure a lot of people are asking. It's easy to get, I don't know, caught up in the excitement of it all, well, new frontiers, without actually considering the like the economic realities. You're absolutely right. There's no, I don't think there's an easy answer. Yeah. But one thing is, I think, pretty clear. Okay. We need to shift, you know, from this mindset of short-term missions yeah. to one of long-term sustainability. Instead of just I don't know, visiting, we need to think about, like, actually building building something that lasts yeah exactly investing in those technologies and that infrastructure you know things that can be reused repurposed and eventually i don't know even turn a profit it's like the difference between renting an apartment and actually you know putting down roots building a house yeah, yeah. renting is temporary but building well that's an investment in the future that's a great analogy and that's precisely what's i think so exciting about you know this whole cis lunar economy yeah. it's not just about extracting right mm -hmm. extracting resources and bringing them back to earth it's about creating a like we were talking about earlier like a self sustaining presence exactly a self sustaining presence in space we're talking about like manufacturing in space conducting research maybe even developing new forms of energy and propulsion things that could i don't know could revolutionize space travel altogether exactly yeah. Exactly. Imagine a future where, I don't know, cis lunar space is just dotted with manufacturing facilities, producing goods that are just, you know, impossible to create here on Earth. Things we haven't even imagined yet. <laughs> exactly. Or research stations. Yeah. yeah. Pushing the boundaries of science in ways that we can only, like, dream of right now. It's like unlocking, I don't know, new levels of human potential, a whole new chapter in our story as, as a species. Even. It really is. And that's why, you know, these conversations, I think they're so important. We need to, like we said, engage the public, right? Inspire that next generation of scientists, the engineers, the dreamers, all of them. It's a team effort, it sounds like. It is. The future of humanity in space, it depends on it. It's a collective effort. We need everyone, you know, from, like you said, from seasoned astronauts to, well, to students just starting their journeys to contribute to this vision, to make it a reality. Absolutely. It's yeah. about, you know, pushing the boundaries of human ingenuity, I think. Daring to imagine a future where humanity exists, well, beyond the confines of Earth, you know. So as we kind of wrap up this this deep dive into cislunar space, what's the one, I don't know, the one key takeaway you want our listener to walk away with? That's easy. Keep looking mm -hmm. up. That's it. Just keep looking up. Pay attention to what's happening up there in the realm of space exploration, space development, all of it. Mm -hmm. 
Because the future, well, the future is closer than you think, and it's being written right now as we speak in that vast expanse between Earth and the Moon. Beautifully said. And to our listener, we leave you with this thought. What role will you play in this incredible journey? The future of humanity in space, it's a story waiting to be written, and everyone, and I mean everyone, has a part to play. Perhaps one day, you know, we'll all be sipping, I don't know, zero-gravity cocktails in that lunar hotel, looking back at Earth, marveling at how far we've come. Cheers to that. This has been an incredible deep dive into cislunar space. And as we look to the future, one thing is certain, it's going to be an exciting ride. It will be. It will be. Until next time, keep exploring.